I've been on the carnivore diet and today I'm a hundred days carnivore. Welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. Super excited to bring you this episode. So what I'm going to talk about on today's video is carnivore diet and Chinese medicine and answer some of those questions that you probably haven't asked, <laughs> but some people have, about the carnivore diet and Chinese medicine. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit about my journey into it and what I've discovered anecdotally on myself and how I've how I've thought about it. And uh, let's get into it. So exciting. Also, before we get started, a little promo, little plug for the course that I'm doing, Self-Care with the Five Elements. So you can support yourself and the channel. It's a very great discount right now. You can jump on the link below and um, book into the course. It's on demand, so you can do it as you as you feel whenever you feel <laughs> the urge to do the course um, and you get uh, 12 months access with the purchase so it's a great way to support yourself and support the channel thank you to the people who already have done that and uh, let's get into the video so 100 days carnivore so um, I'm going to talk about uh, my journey in it and what I think about carnivore in Chinese medicine so we'll talk about carnivore in Chinese medicine first off um, I firstly got this idea to think about it because someone asked me, and I have got a video on this about carnivore diet and blood deficiency, and I think they were asking about psoriasis. And that got me thinking about what is the carnivore diet and what does it do and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think I think in Chinese medicine, definitely I would say it's a healthy diet. I don't think it's unhealthy in a Chinese medicine way. Uh, so we want to think about the basic principles of Chinese medicine and how does that diet fit into it. And that's how you can decide for yourself if you're a practitioner watching this or you're a student. Whenever I've taught students in Chinese diet therapy, that's something I teach them how to think. So you know, you have to know what Chinese medicine thinks about what's healthy and then say, well, what's this, what is this diet doing? And what, what's the upside, downside, upside, downside? <laughs> right. So is it healthy in Chinese medicine? Could it be considered a healthy diet? Yes, it could be. Um, could it be considered unnecessary or unhealthy in certain, some circumstances? Yes, I'm sure that there would be. And we, we'll talk about the possible detriment of, of a carnivore diet um, as we go further into this video. So um, what do you eat on the carnivore diet? That's probably your first question if you're not already um, down this rabbit hole and you don't know what pet carnivores eat. It's basically meat and animal products. Now, there are variations of of, of the of the diet right to the extreme of the lion diet and you might have heard Michaela Peterson talk about the lion diet and I think she just eats lamb and beef and that's all right so only what's called ruminant animals so some people on carnivore eat a variety of animal products so including things like dairy eggs um, they basically don't eat any plant products um, so um, and it could include things like bacon and, and pork and things like that, or some people don't include those things. Why do people go to a carnivore diet? I think predominantly people go to it for two reasons. One is to lose weight, and a second one would be because they have a health condition, they're trying to reduce the, the symptoms of that health condition or possibly affect that health condition. So for, for most people, predominantly it's in an inflammation or health condition where and there's there's many health conditions where there's inflammation in the body um, where that's at the core of it um, so I'm going to talk about my personal experience a bit in this video I don't usually do that in these things but I thought I'll start off with the Chinese medicine aspect of it first um, so the second thing to think about with carnivore is how does it fit into Chinese medicine well it's mostly cooked for sure um, you wouldn't really eat a lot of raw meats on this diet so just because it's meat you're going to cook cook the food and that in itself makes it healthy on the healthier side of Chinese medicine okay um, so we say you should eat mostly cooked foods most of the time now there's a concept in foods with yin and yang and foods can either contain like a predominance of one or the other cooking things makes things more yang for sure and I think that's why we think cooking is you know makes things easier to digest because your stomach likes warm cooked and moist it doesn't like cold dry and raw when you put cold dry or raw in there you have to cook it more in your stomach which means use more heat use more energy use more yang to or chi to digest the food 
and that in itself over many times like keeping on doing eating like that regularly could, would deplete you more than if you weren't having to do that so if you cook the foods that kind of helps that process along um something that i think you you can think about with carnivore is that there is definitely more life in the foods there's more yang in foods that are meat so if we go through various chinese diet therapy books um, all kinds of meat particularly younger meats that they, they all tend to be tonification kinds of foods right so to tonic foods now the downside of those tonic foods is often this is where things are going to go a little bit uh, uh, down a rabbit hole <laughs> I would say or just I need to explain things a little bit more because in TCM sometimes meats are considered too heating right you might have heard that from your practitioner oh these things are too heating these things are too 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 heatiness for you um, and that can be the case but it's not always just the meat that's causing the heat it's what you put with it that can cause some of that heatiness right and I'll tell you from my own experience of doing this for a hundred days of carnivore uh, what I what I've experienced through it um, and that, that's a good way to to kind of experience something is to experience it <laughs> to try it for yourself for a long enough to go through you know seasonal change with it for long enough to go through you know different aspects 100 days is enough time for me to think about it enough to do this video <laughs> right so that's one side of of it um, I think one of the downsides of the carnivore diet could be that it's going to get too hot and a bit drying for people because you aren't really having a lot of yin in the foods. So what is yin? This is yin, water, right? So what is yin? Yin, <clears throat> purely yin is water. But the downside of yin could be dampness. So things that are rich and greasy and carbohydrate-y and sugary uh, are on the yin side of things not the yang side of things um, because they're going to produce fat in our body and that is yin so we could say that by having a carnivore diet you're eating a lot less dampness definitely i would say that's definitely for sure um, even though and this might be a bit of a oh hang on a minute there's a lot of fat in the carnivore diet but you're not having grains you're not having carbohydrates so you're essentially in ketosis, you're in a state of ketosis. So you can capacitate all of those fats and your body needs those fats. Otherwise, you won't be able to function on this diet unless you do have a lot of those fats. So what fats do you use? You Usually most people cook with butter on the carnivore diet. So they do have cheese or cream, um, sometimes milk, depending on how what variant they have of carnivore. For most people that are looking to stop inflammation or use it as a as a treatment they would usually reduce or go away from the dairy side of things so uh, let's think about what it does in chinese medicine um, from a healthy perspective if you're losing weight and, and you're overweight of course right that's a good thing if you're able to put on muscle mass uh, and you are underweight that's a good thing so that's it's it's kind of helps us you know sustain that part of things there is also this concept in chinese diet therapy chinese medicine of like everything you take in has to be digested it has to take up energy to do the job of digestion so let's say i'm going to drink a lot of water i don't just absorb that water i have to do something to that water i have to use energy to make that water you know to for it to go into my bloodstream to, to, to be absorbed or or even to make urine like if i don't need that water and i'm just drinking and drinking for no reason um you know and say oh i'm flushing out the toxins or whatever well i'm making urine it's essentially wasting some of my body's energy to do that so it's taking up energy to do that and a lot of foods that we eat are not for the benefit of the food they are for the benefit of <laughs> the brain <laughs> like and I don't mean benefit, I mean like we want to eat them because they're delicious and we're addicted to them or because we, we're thinking about them, you know, who doesn't love a, a, a good piece of chocolate cake or whatever it is. So we eat them because, and we could even say, look, some of these things might have a mental health benefit for us, right? So food is something that is 
are so tricky because it's a social thing as well as a sustaining thing right but there can, can come a point for some people where they can't manage things from a social perspective and it becomes a detrimental thing they can't manage that addiction of that food um so what does carnivore do for people in that, that situation well i noticed this from myself so we're going to start talking about my little anecdotal evidence um is that when i first started it um i had 75 days of very strict so carnivore only nothing else added in there except i added these things myself in my own diet so i did a thing called 75 hard <laughs> again <laughs> the second time around so as part of this i was doing two workouts a day right two 45 minute workouts so one was outside walking and the other one was usually a treadmill walk i also committed to drink a gallon of water a day and we'll talk about the water and how that plays into the carnivore in a minute as well um, and you read 10 pages of a non-fiction book every day take a little progress photo every day um, and if you miss one of those things or you cheat on the diet um, you have to start the whole 75 again now what did i include in my diet any kinds of animal products so for the most part i was eating beef bacon um, some chicken uh, eggs butter some cheeses so hard cheese um, philadelphia cream cheese i was having some of that um, with my bacon <laughs> i really like that and nuts so i had included nuts in my diet and i also included coffee because i like coffee and i wasn't going to quit quit coffee so technically those two things could tip you out of carnivore so if you were trying to do this for a which completely to reduce inflammation you'd probably have to give those things up as well right so that's what i that's what i did and i was committed i was doing my exercise every day drinking the water and no alcohol right? so strictly for 75 days at the end of those 75 days i finished my program and i was planning to just stop the carnivore right so i had lost 10.1 kilos on this on this 75 days doing 75 hard carnivore which I was really happy about um, and I had about five days at the end of it before I had to go on a 10-day study trip right Shanghai Lun retreat study trip and I planned in my mind when I went on this study trip I'll I'll be off the carnivore by then because I was like oh I'm not going to bother people with this stupid carnivore <laughs> diet when I'm away it's a bit too much, a bit too intense, right? How am I going to, or what, what am I going to do? Like, you know, it's hard to eat out. Um, I wanted to enjoy myself. I wanted to, I wanted to eat a cake. I wanted to eat something else. But what I found is when I finished it, I remembered in my mind how hard it was at the start. It was probably hard for two weeks where I was like thinking about pasta, thinking about carbs, um, thinking about sugar, and it was hard like it was really hard it was like you really noticed it especially because i knew i was going to do it so i probably had look i love pasta <laughs> who doesn't love a good pasta i do like that stuff like pizza i mean i don't eat that stuff all the time but like i was eating it regularly as part of the week i would have i would have had i would have had pasta a few times a week right um so when I finished 75 hard, I thought, you know what? I feel so good. That was one thing that I definitely noticed. Like my brain was so much sharper. The clarity of your mind was so much clearer. And I almost could, I could sit there and watch other people eat a pasta or other people eat chips. I mean, chips, <laughs> who doesn't love fucking chips? Like chippies. I was, I, you know, I couldn't have at the start of 75 hard if I wasn't on it. I wouldn't have been able to sit there and watch other people eat a bowl of chips in front of me without feeling like, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, I'll have a chippy. Anyway, so after those five days, I was like, you know what? I uh, this is so that so this is the next eight into getting into up to about day eighty. I was like, you know what? I don't need to. I don't need to finish seventy five hard and eat a big bowl of pasta. I don't need to do any of that. And I just stayed on carnivore. But what I did do is add in alcohol. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to have a glass of wine. 
um, probably had a few days of, you know, a couple of days where I've gone out with some friends and had a celebrational drink. Red wine is what I love the most out of all the wines and the beers and whatever. I'm not really a beer person. And so then I went in on my on my Shanghan Lun retreat, right? The, the the study course. So it's quite intense. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay on Carnivore. And I actually stayed on Carnivore. What I did is I went to the shops every day, well not every day, every couple of days, and bought a, a tray of steaks, cooked them up, and I just eat the steaks cold for lunch, right? So I was making my own lunch, and then while I was away, I would have had some sauces on some meats which I didn't have before. On 75 Hard, I never added sauces. I only cooked with salt and pepper. I didn't, you know, there was no gravy or anything like that. So inevitably, there was a few times where I'd had like a butter chicken, for instance, and I would just eat the chicken out of the sauce. So there would have been other things in that sauce, um, albeit they're probably carnivory kinds, types of, you know, cream and whatnot in there. But there were other flavors is what I'm saying. So I had, you know, added other flavors in there a little bit but no carbs so no breads no pa- no pizza even though i wanted to eat pizza <laughs> even though i wanted to give it a give it a good crack so what happened is in that te- in that next 10 days um i wasn't able to weigh myself until the end of it went to a friend's place by the end of the trip went to brisbane and i weighed myself and i'd, I'd lost another one and a half kilos even though that whole rest of the 10 days i was sitting in a chair for the whole time and i was drinking alcohol again not every night, but mostly every night we would we were we were drinking um, something, you know, of some sort. So that's adding calories into it. And we're not advocating people do this because the difference between doing carnivore and not drinking versus carnivore and drinking, I'll tell you about that in a minute because that wasn't great. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I I kept, I lost weight even though I wasn't exercising at all, right? And I was just drinking water moderately again right so not i'm not really a fan of the gallon of water a day but i think thinking about what carnivore does to your body you need more water you definitely have to drink more water because the foods are unless you're having stews that you make like watery stew which you can do no reason why you can't do that if you're cooking up a steak every day or cooking up scrambled eggs you, it's a bit drying the the, the the diet so you need to drink plenty of water right so that's a good idea i would say that if you are doing carnivore you want to have good quality water now i noticed when i got home the because i've got this rain water they get delivered and it's amazing water when i was away i was just at the mercy of whatever they said it was spring water but i'm sure it, it didn't taste the same as this nice water that i have here at my office i get that water delivered it's so good um like that definitely made a difference, right? Like since I've been home, I haven't had any leg cramps and I wonder whether it's the water, right? The, the quality of the water it was when I was away, it was probably the drinking um, and the, and the, the less, co- less quantity of water and the, the less quality of water. Like I was getting these massive leg cramps in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> and that was the, that was the difference, right? And I, and definitely drinking, alcohol being a carnivore um you don't feel definitely don't feel as good as if you're just not drinking right you, you don't have that clarity of in your brain like you still you're going to get hung over in the morning like you're not going to feel great whereas i noticed progressively as the months went on that i was doing carnivore with no drinking like my brain was clear i felt i just every day i was thinking i feel so good i feel so good like i was really noticed how good i felt the how what kind of good do you feel so one thing is you don't feel tired after eating you basically go from hungry and then you're full you're satisfied so what you do notice is if you don't have the food prepared or you haven't got food you need to eat right you'll get to this point where you're like man i'm really hungry and you're like i've got to eat and then as soon as you eat you just feel full and sometimes it wouldn't even be a whole steak it might even be three quarters of a steak so that's part of it right you just feel satisfied and then you don't you're not picking and looking for other foods afterwards what i did find before this let's say i had a pasta this would be a great example of the kinds of what what it's doing to your body in some way right so like before i did carnivore i remember this because i was thinking oh i'm gonna do carnivore better i'm 75 hard i'll have my last meal my last pasta meal or something like that um 
and I made one of the pastas that I love the most, which is like a creamy sauce with bacon, like a carbonara kind of a sauce with bacon and mushroom and you know, pasta. So I made that and because I'd made it, you know, at home and from scratch, there, I had a bowl of it. Oh, so delicious. And then I was like, you know what? I could probably eat another bowl of that. And I knew there was another bowl there because I just cooked it. And I went and ate another bowl of it, right? And you do, and you, I didn't, did I need those calories? Did I need that food? Um, no, but it was just like, it just tasted so delicious. I wanted to eat more of it. And you never have that on carnival, never. Like you never eat a steak and think, man, I could eat another steak unless you actually need that. Okay, now what happened to me over time, naturally, I didn't restrict the calories at all or say I could only have one meal a day or anything like that. They recommend, other carnival people recommend that you eat a lot when you first start it, right? Now, I'm not really a big fan of breakfasts anyway, but sometimes I wake up and I'll be hungry first thing in the morning, so I'll usually have a couple of eggs. Uh, sometimes I'll have a steak in the bre for breakfast, but not that, not that often. But what I noticed is over time, I was eating later and later, so about two o'clock in the afternoon is probably when I would usually have a lunch, and that'll be the first meal of the day. Now, mind you, I've had a few coffees with milk before that, but I'm was still I'm still been losing weight doing this system. So when it gets to that two o'clock, you've got to have the food there. If you're out and about and you haven't eaten and you for, or you forgot to take it with you, then you're like you're at the mercy of like, okay, there's only bloody sausage rolls or whatever, and you can't eat those things, you know. So you really have to make sure you've planned it, and you need to. I just basically cook up a steak and put it in my handbag with the wrap it up in alfoil and take it with me you know in case i'm gonna if i know i'm gonna be out at the lunchtime or hard-boiled egg bring a hard-boiled egg in your bag so um what was i saying um you i've naturally found that i was just eating less food and so every few days i still will wake up and i might have something for breakfast that i'm like i'm waking up hungry but in general like i've been eating less and less food as time goes on right because maybe you just don't need as much um you i'm functioning better you know without just being less hungry um so in chinese medicine we de definitely recommend people eat regularly so you've got to come to some regularity i'm not saying i eat randomly but the regularity has changed over in in this hundred days so let's say the first 30 days i was probably eating two meals a day no matter what now I'll probably have one and a half meals a day. So some days I don't have that second meal. I'm just not hungry for it, um, depending on what's going on. When I was doing 75 hard, I think I needed those two meals a day for sure because I was exercising more, whereas not exercising as much. Now I'm, I, I just literally got back from my Shanghai Lun, um retreat conference thing. So I've got to go back into the exercise routine now. But um, yeah, when I wasn't, wasn't exercising as much, I noticed I could sustain on one meal, you know, one meal a day or just less food, not, not as much food. Um, right, so that's one thing that it's helped me with. Definitely um, it's helped me with clarity of mind. You don't feel foggy-headed or tired after eating. That, was, that would be very rare, right, to, to feel that. Um, is it cheaper than a normal diet? I think it's probably about the same, possibly cheaper. You definitely have less food wastage. You, you save a lot of time at the supermarket. You don't have to buy a whole bunch of other stuff. Like you're just literally going to the eggs, to the meat aisle and the eggs and the, and I just buy butter, eggs, meat, cheese, milk. That's pretty much it. You know, maybe some soda water <laughs> for something fun to drink. Um, and that, that it's kind of convenient in that way, right? So you're not wasting vegetables and stuff that go off or things that you didn't think about. Um, another thing that's definitely been helpful for me is um, it's made me more productive in a way that I don't have to think about what am I going to eat every day. It's basically just, is it going to be scotch fillet or porterhouse <laughs> steak, right? Which steak am I going to have today? Um, and that's based on what I bought in, during the week. Like it's, you know, I buy it in a big roll and kind of cut, cut, it, cut it up myself. So it takes a lot of the decision fatigue out of your life, right? So if you're looking to be more productive, like I think carnivore diet is kind of good like that. I'm not recommending carnivore diet to people without you consulting with your own doctor, without consulting with your own, you know, physician or healthcare practitioner. 
um, because like this is not medical advice that I'm giving out here say go and do this diet but I just want to give the Chinese medicine perspective of it and my own you know, perspective of, of doing it um, now let's talk about plants right and and, and carnivore um, in a Chinese medicine context right because I've heard lots of carnivore doctors say uh, plants are poison <laughs> Right? Now I'm a herbalist and I'm like, they are, they are powerful substances and they can be poisonous substances, right? And, that, and in a way it's like that, using that strategically to do something. And I think anecdotally, I, the other thing I was doing on, on, this, on this whole 75 thing was taking, you know, herbs, right, for myself. So I was having some plant products, it was just the herbs that I taken. Now I've had that formula before. I've had that brand of those herbs before so it wasn't like the formula was special I've had it before I know what it does for me um, but I felt like the herbs were working better because I wasn't eating any other stuff so almost like this idea I, I'm not sure if people are aware that how Chinese herbalists used to work out what the functions and stuff of the herbs were but like what what they would do is people would be part of a monastery or some kind of like um you know uh, fasting process and they would just have that herb and see what it does like did that give me diarrhea did that give me constipation like um you know did that um like if you're fasting and you're also in a meditative state you can sometimes feel where that herb's going in your body that kind of stuff so there's there's a long history of like people testing Chinese herbs on themselves like that right and, and then I'm sh assuming they would have tested formulas and stuff like that on on themselves as practitioners and monks that were documenting what these medicinal substances did right this is back even before the Han dynasty right before they had um, documented textbooks of things be how did they get that knowledge to even know oh this is a herb this is a medicine like this is you know whatever it is something to avoid a poison something like that so I almost felt like there was a little bit of that going on when I was taking the herbs because it was so strategic it was working better than if I was having other stuff in my system right um, and it comes back to that principle that I was talking about before about everything you take in has to be digested Right. And we, we eat so much food, myself included. I'm not having a go at anyone here because I'm part of the part of those people that like I love the taste of different things, right? Like who doesn't love a birthday cake? Like this kind of stuff. Like it but you we I had found myself just eating so much stuff just because it was delicious and yummy. It wasn't necessarily needed for me to eat that. So the the meat diet or the carnivore diet kind of allows yourself to be sustained. And then I think it could be very powerful if you were to then think about using foods as medicines. You would know exactly what they're doing, right? You would know if there's nothing else in your system, you'd know if you ate a mango, what that did to you. You would know if you ate um, some bok choy or some lettuce, you would know what that did to you because you're just having that one thing as a kind of a medicinal substance. A few times in carnivore, I did have a few little mushroom balls, right? Here's a little plug for mushroom balls. <laughs> you can use the promo code below, below to get um, a, a discount off your order and you also support the channel at Empirical Health. Um, so I was eating some of those little mushroom balls because in my clinic, I have them at the front and I have little ones as testers samples. So sometimes I'll just take a few. Now, I wasn't having many, but I, I noticed that... Um, I could really notice what they were doing because I wasn't eating any other food. Another thing that I noticed, this is just naturally probably what's going to happen if you don't have sugar, is my tastes have changed, right? So there's some Chinese herbs that taste really bad, <laughs> like t terrible. Um, and one of the formulas is made with honey, right? And it's made for like blood stasis, right? Basically purging blood stagnation. And I had some of those things. Normally I have to sort of chew them up and then just sort of quickly wash it down with water because it's like, oh, they, you know, they're good for you. But I, 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 I remember eating them and thinking, oh, this isn't too bad. They taste quite delicious. Like I could really taste the honey in that, even though there's these other herbs in there that are, I won't tell you what they are, just taste they're pretty strong. Um, also animal herbs. So that's part of carnivore, I guess, <laughs> like leeches and whatnot in there. And 
like yeah my taste had changed so i was like oh this is like almost a delicious little snack um <laughs> steam on tongue kind of thing um anyway so that's as a side thing so your tastes change right um and definitely the cravings for, for other foods have gone away and that's one of the reasons why i didn't just go back onto normal eating at the end of 75 hard and i've stayed on carnivore till now because it was so hard at the start. It was really hard. And so if, if you're watching this and you're thinking, I'd like to try carnivore because of either of those two reasons, you need to lose weight or you um, you know, have inflammation in your body and you're trying to see if this would help with that, persist through that because it is, it, it is, it is hard, but it, was, it got easier as time went on. I just had stopped thinking about it. And I would definitely recommend just going cold turkey on the alcohol when you first start it because alcohol is sugary and if you're having that sugar you're probably going to still crave a bit of sugar and crave that kind of thing so it definitely got easier as time went on for sure right um another thing that changes for lots of people on carnivore is their bowels change right so you want to keep this in um uh, in cahoots in consult consultation with your practitioner uh and just monitor that, right? So I never, not, I never had constipation on this, um, but your bowels do change, right? So they, it won't be for some people. They don't um, go to the toilet um, every day, even they might go every second day. Now that's not really optimal in Chinese medicine. That never happened to me, but definitely your bowels. Like if if you if you're on the looser side of things, um, then this is going to be great because it's going to form up your stools much better, right? And your body gets used to it after a while. So for some people, it takes a bit of time to get used to the fat content and to actually not need that fiber that you're told you need. So this is another little myth about, you know, do you need, a, you know, you, what about fiber and things like that? Like your body will get used to it and your bowels will be, um, you know, get used to it and they're going to change. But they should, you should still have one proper bowel movement that comes out, like not not sort of like hard to go or you know feeling as if you as if you want to go but you're not able to go that kind of stuff so i think those are all things you need to discuss in consultation with your practitioner but if you're on the deficient side of things in chinese medicine you you tend you would tend to have looser or stickier bowels like harder to maybe a lot of wiping or you know maybe a several times going um this kind of diet would be better because it's more drying it's more yang so you're going to have more yang to bulk up, make the stools form. Uh, and you may notice that that diarrhea kind of goes away just because you're eating less yin and more yang. That's the, the basic concept of the yin and yang of your poo. <laughs> right? um, so I think I've covered most of the things I wanted to cover in this um, video about what is the carnivore diet. I mean, the other side of carnivore diet is it's, it's a blood tonifying diet. It's a yang tonifying diet for women like we get blood deficient as time goes on for sure that's what happens because you've got having a menstrual cycle men tend to get more yang deficient rather than yin deficient right uh, sorry more yang deficient rather than blood deficient but both still get depleted right women's get women's yang gets depleted through their blood right because you need yang in the blood otherwise it'd just be cold blood it's you still got yang in your blood so um, yeah, I think this is a good diet. Um, it, and the other aspect of it, if you're trying to lose weight or you need to lose weight, um, or you want to lose weight, um, that is going to help you in itself. So even if you did this as a way to help you lose weight, and that's what, that's what I, that's the, the main reason why I did it for myself. Um, because it, it just stopped me thinking about other foods. Now, now I'm thinking about what am I going to do next, right? So I'm thinking, mm. I was pushing my shopping trolley through the supermarket today. I was thinking, do I even need to go to the supermarket? Like I didn't really need to go in there. Um, but I was at a different store and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll go in there, right? Um, and I bought some, a Christmas house for my nephews because they love making those little, you know, little Christmas house. I was thinking, you know what? I probably will just go crazy on Christmas day and eat whatever I want and we'll face the peril of that <laughs> boxing day, whatever happens, right? Um, I think if you do carnivore for a while, it makes sense that you should transition other foods into your diet if you're going to stop it. Um, it wouldn't make sense if you just 
like I don't think I will do that is just eat a whole massive amount of carbs and other things on Christmas day that would be that would be crazy um, and that wouldn't wouldn't be great so whatever you do it's good to and that brings me to starting carnivore um, in a healthy way I think it's better to transition towards it rather than just starting at cold turkey why would you start at cold turkey look if you're really sick and you're like i have to just do something or it's kind of like when people just stop alcohol because they you know they're at the rock bottom and they have to and they're like i'm just going to stop right but if if you've been eating certain things for a while you're going to have a detriment by stopping it so it might be helpful for you to, to transition to it a lot of people get a thing called a keto flu right they don't feel good or they get almost flu like symptoms if they go from eating lots of carbs and they've not been in ketosis to being to going into ketosis so these are all things you should consult with your practitioner about before you start it is this right for me um how is because if you change how your metabolism it's going to affect what medications you're taking maybe and how your body metabolizes those things as well but if you're overweight like it can't help it can't hurt you to lose weight like losing weight is going to be help healthy for you to be able to do that um and so this might be a way of getting towards that weight loss, an easier way in, in a way, right? Um, because it takes away that decision fatigue. It takes away that thing of like, I'm not sure what to, uh, you know, and you don't have to count any calories or, um, you know, work out other stuff. I have found it very hard to lose weight in the past um, unless I was doing 75 hard it was because there's so much discipline on 75 hard, you kind of have to do it. And last year when I did 75 hard, I naturally found myself going towards carnivore, although I didn't know what the carnivore diet really was, but I was naturally just going towards eating steak at the end of it. But at the start of 75 hard, I had allowed myself to have even pasta and things like that on that diet. It was just portion controlled and stuff. And I'd lost 10 kilos last year when I did 75 hard, 9.1, I think, kilos I lost then. Um comparing the two 75 hards and it was the same season that i did it almost exactly to the to the day so it was sort of august september october um like end very end of august you know to the 10th of november kind of thing both times right one thing i wanted to mention is that doing all that exercise i felt less pain on my body doing carnival than i did doing just a random other diet that included carbs that wasn't really on ketosis <clears throat> and I wonder whether that helps you reco- it helped my recovery right from from doing all the exercise the walking um yeah the intense because on 75 hard you have no rest days like you you, you do it every day now I, I was basically just walking on a treadmill um so and I was I would be dripping in sweat like I would be I'd be exercising hard enough um and but I wasn't doing like heaps of weights and things like that but two walk two 45 minute walks a day every day 75 days and I very rarely felt sore um, compared to the soreness that I felt the first time I did it so I think I think that helps us this is just all my own anecdotal evidence (laughs) so I hope this video has been interesting to you (laughs) a bit of a rant a bit of something different Um, so my summary for the carnivore diet in Chinese medicine is that I think it's a healthy diet it's obviously not for everyone I think it's a highly blood tonic diet I think it's great if you've got dampness and you're trying to lose weight because you, all the symptoms of dampness will go away. So it has to help dampness, right? Because you don't have foggy headedness. You don't um, have, oh, and you hardly pass any gas. That's another thing from carnivore. Like you never, um, you would basically pass wind like once a week, right? So you don't feel gassy. You don't feel bloated. You don't feel full, right? As in blow, you feel satisfied full, but you don't feel distended for i don't think you can overeat because you just kind of eat the, the steak or the or the the meat until you, you you're satisfied the only day i didn't feel satisfied on carnival was when i didn't eat red meat so i had one day where i had pork because i cooked up this pork belly i thought oh i have a very variety marie cooked up a pork belly so delicious but i that was one night where i did go to bed feeling like oh i'm a bit hungry still um and i had a tooth taken out uh, on one of these like about four weeks ago from now i couldn't obviously really chew a steak that same day right the next day i was back on the steak <laughs> don't get me wrong but that first i was just have, you know eating trying to find what can i eat soft foods right i'll have to eat um eggs so i just had hard-boiled eggs and 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 scrambled eggs and i probably would have had about five or six eggs that day 
And I was all right, but I wasn't as satisfied as when I ate red meat. So I think you definitely need that red meat. Like it definitely makes a difference. Um, definitely made a difference to me. Um, yeah, so that's my carnivore experience and I um, hope you're doing well and uh, yeah if you've got questions about it put it in the comments and we can have a chat about that more more about it um, obviously it's not for everyone um, I, I don't think it's I don't think that di this diet's for everyone obviously um, but it certainly has worked for me and I think it's healthy in in it from a Chinese medicine perspective especially if you've tried a lot of other things to lose weight um, or, or to reduce inflammation and you just can't get away from being, craving those foods um, there's definitely something to be said for the addictive nature of some of these foods that are out there that they taste so good you know these different packet foods and stuff and when you don't have them like I've still I've got a chocolate bar in my fridge that I got from Qantas plane this is a really good example on my way home um, I didn't eat the meal on the way there on the way back they said oh it's beef and something right so I, I, I said yes I'll have the meal open it up it had half mashed potato which i didn't eat and it had this really nice beef beef stew so i ate the beef out of it i was like oh thanks Qantas. but they'd given me a little chocolate bar with it if i'd have done that at the start of this like at the start of the 75 hard with a with a start of carnivore um i would be thinking oh there's that chocolate in the fridge oh marie there's that chocolate mm, don't forget there's that chocolate in the fridge like a little voice in your head right and it's been in the fridge this whole time and i haven't really thought about it um i've obviously put, i put it in the fridge door thinking oh gee, that's probably tempting fate you know um, because what was what would happen to me before i did carnivore is like you know you'd be sort of lonely at, late at night 11 o'clock and like, oh what's in the fridge oh <laughs> what's in the cupboard and um you know there might be some little treat in there for you marie <laughs> this kind of shit goes through your head so it's helped me with that stuff right and that's why i was when i was when i went to the shanghan lun thing i was like oh i'm not gonna if I break this, I might, I might not be able to get back on. That's what I was thinking. I was kind of like, and, and also after I'd weighed myself and, and realized I'd lost even more weight. Um, so this is all healthy weight. Like I've got more weight to lose. <laughs> I, need, I could easily lose another 15 kilos. Um, there's a photo of me somewhere here. Um, where is it? Um, this is my, this is my little Chinese, me and my little Chinese man. So this is me in China in 2001 in Hangzhou this is just a random guy from the train station and um but that's how small I was I was size eight back then and yeah I just I've just been enjoying the good life <laughs> let myself go um yeah but uh feeling good now so um hope you're doing well and thanks everyone for supporting the channel don't forget about the two promos you can go on to empirical health the links below to get the mushroom balls and get the discount and support the channel we get some money when you do that that's really great and they'll ship them straight to you really great organic mushroom ball products and you can support yourself by getting the course the self-care with the five elements learn about um, particularly mental health and things like that in the five within the five elements it's a, a unique course that I put together to help you have a, a, a great experience <laughs> Um, so anyway, I hope you're doing well and I'll see you again on another video soon. Thank you. This is yin, water, right? <coughs> that was a fail to throw that right back in your mouth, right? <coughs> During the video.